Janmad yasya yato viyad itaratas chate swa vigya swarat. Tene brahma hidaya adikabaye uyantiyat surayaha. Tejo vari medam yata vini mayo yatra tri sargo misha. Tejo vari medam yata vini mayo yatra tri sargo misha. Damna svina sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param di mahi. Damna svina sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param di mahi. O my Lord Sri Krishna, O son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primal cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. And therefore, meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitya Vutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vidyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Pare Ishwarha Sadhya Hide Avarujite Tra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from an illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturo galitam phalam Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam Mohor aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad bhagavatam The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature it emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectar and juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna, Shambhantam Swakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Hedyanta Stohi Abhadrani, Hedyanta Stohi Abhadrani, Vidu Nati Srihit Satam, To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures, Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, To hear from him directly through is it self-righteous activity? Is it self-righteous? And for, and for one who hears about Krishna, for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart. Acts as a best-wishing friend. Acts as a best-wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Let's stop praise about this. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Tamasloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhava, kama loba dayaschaye, cheta itarinavidam, stitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. And it's material lusts and avarice. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yogadaha. Bhagavad bhakti yogadaha. Bhagavad tatva vijyanam. Bhagavad tatva vijyanam. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Chidyante Sarvasam Saya Chiyante Chasikaramani Drista Evatmanishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Text 45. Sarvetam Ananir Jagmur. Sarvetam Ananir Jagmur. Bharata Pitanishchaya. Bharata Pitanishchaya. Kalinadharma mitrena, Kalinadharma mitrena, Tristva sprista prajabhuvi. Tristva sprista prajabhuvi. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The younger brothers of Maharaj Yudhisthira observed that the age of Kali had already arrived throughout the world, and that the citizens of the kingdom were already affected by irreligious, irreligious practice. Therefore, they decided to follow in the footsteps of their elder brother. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The younger brothers of Maharaj Yudhisthira were already obedient followers of the great emperor. And they had sufficiently been trained to know the ultimate goal of life. They therefore decidedly followed their eldest brother in rendering devotional service to Lord Sri Krishna. According to the principles of Sanatana Dharma, one must retire from family life after half the duration of life is finished and must engage himself in self-realization. <clears throat> 
But the question of engaging oneself is not always decided. Sometimes retired men are bewildered about how to engage themselves for the last days of life. Here is a decision by authorities, like, pun like the Pandavas. All of them engage themselves in favorably culturing the devotional service of the Lord Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. According to Swami Shidara, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, or fruit of activities, philosophical speculations, and salvation, as conceived by several persons, are not the ultimate goal of life. They are more or less practiced by persons who have no information of the ultimate goal of life. The ultimate goal of life is already ex uh, indicated by the Lord himself in the Bhagavad Gita, 1864, and the Pandavas were intelligent enough to follow it without hesitation. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, so... Is it 1865? Yeah. Sarva Dharma Puritya Jamami Saranam Raja Ham Tum Sarva Papi. Moksi Syami Mahasuja. Well, it's six. Okay. That's 65. No, 64. No, that's 64. It's Sarva Guya Tamam Buya, Srinume Paramam Vacha, Isto Si Medjudam Iti Tato Vaksyami. Tehitam. So that was quoted previously also. In, in, in the book of it says 1865. Mine's 65. Kind of strange. Mine's 65. Yeah, I have 64 also. Uh, that's all right. They're both good. <laughs> but he quoted 64 earlier. Uh, where was that? Mm. He quoted it previously. Where was that? Hmm. It should be 64, right? Yeah. Well, it should be 65, but that was quoted previously. Okay, anyway. Oh, Bhagavad Gita 1862 was quoted previously. Yeah, okay. And now he's quoting 64 or 65? So 62 is, O Skynabar, to surrender unto him utterly by his grace, you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. 64 says, because you are my very dear friend, I'm speaking to you, my supreme instruction, most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this from me, for it is for your benefit. Maybe it's 65. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the ultimate goal here is supposed to be Sarvada. Yeah, that would be... <laughs> 66, yeah. 66, yeah. Okay, well, whatever. We don't have to. See. But the previous quote was 62. And here it says 64, maybe it's 65 or 66. Okay. So, the, the question here is um, that According to Swami Sridhara, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, or fruit, of act or fruit of activities, philosophical speculations, and salvation as conceived by several persons are not the ultimate goal of life. So that's the point that is being made here. They are more or less practiced by persons who have no information of the ultimate goal of life. The ultimate goal of life is already indicated by the Lord himself in the Bhagavad Gita, 1864. And the Pandavas were intelligent enough to follow it without hesitation. Hmm. Well, 64 says, because you are my very dear friend, I'm speaking, so it can't be 1864. Yeah. 
He's going to speak about ultimate goal. Yeah. Yeah. So it should be 65. Okay. So, and the Pandavas were intelligent enough to follow it without hesitation. Now, why does it say, well, he's quoting Sridhar, uh, Swami Sridhara, Dharma, Artakama, and Moksha, or fruit of activities, philosophical speculations, and salvation, as conceived by several persons, are not the ultimate goal of life. So what is that salvation they're talking about? Well, it could be somewhere in the material world, either the uh, high, usually it's referring to the higher planetary uh, systems uh, and the rewards of karmakanda performances. So that's pious activity, but it doesn't lead to complete liberation. It leads to a what seems to be like liberation for some people. Long, long period of sense gratification. <laughs> but that's not the real thing. So how do people get fooled by that? Well, it's, it's basically because the reward of going back to God it is so special and so intimate that it's not given easily. Uh, until one is completely purged of all material desires. And that's the point. Being purged of all material desires, but not in the Mayavadi way of giving up all desires, but in the Krishna conscious way of purifying the desires, to desire only to serve Krishna with love and devotion. So this is a hard thing for most people to understand, because they say, well, what do you mean I, I, I go to church or I go to the temple, I do Satyanar and Puja every month, and uh, I do this and I do that, I go on pilgrimage, and, and uh, you're saying that this is not the goal of life? Uh, and, and I have no information of the ultimate goal of life? Well, you see, uh, the answer is yes, you don't, because there's still self-interest. As long as there's I want, there's not pure devotion. Uh, one has to be completely surrendered to Krishna. So, therefore, there are verses like that, especially 1862 is a verse like that, where it says that you must surrender completely. O Skaina Bharata, surrender unto him utterly, meaning completely. By his grace, you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. So here it says, a living entity should therefore surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is situated in everyone's heart and that will relieve him from all kinds of miseries of this material existence. By such surrender, not only will one be released from all miseries in this life, but at the end he will reach the Supreme God. The transcendental world is described in Vedic literature as Rig, Rig Veda 122.20 as Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam. Which means that all the, the, the real demigods or, or pure demigods uh, understand that the goal of the Vedic knowledge is surrendering at the lotus of uh, Lord Vishnu. So, therefore, Tat Vishnu Paramam Padam. Paramam Padam means the ultimate or the transcendental feet of the Lord. So that complete surrender means one has only desires to please the Lord. The, the one does not have any other type of desire. There's no, I want this. It's simply, I'm com I surrender completely to the Lord. Whatever the Lord wants, that's what I want. So this is difficult for people to understand. And most people don't understand it. And, and all, again, it's, it's uh, emphasized in other parts of the Bhagavad Gita, where it says, uh, it's, it's impossible to overcome the material nature. But one who surrenders unto me, it's easy. It's very easy. And then uh, also uh, in the uh, eighth chapter, Bhagavad Gita, 
<clears throat> when it says Vedesu Yagyesu Tapasu Chaiva, the person who accepts the path of devotional service is not bereft of the results derived from studying the Vedas, performing austere sacrifices, giving charity, or pursuing philosophical and fruitive activities. Simply by performing devotional service, he attains all these, and at the end, he reaches the supreme eternal abode. But if you simply do these things out of custom and habit, or thinking that I will be elevated to the heavenly planets and enjoy heavenly pleasures, that means that one is confused about what the goal of life is. And this is basically what the Muslims are seeking and what most Hindus are seeking who are pious. Many Hindus are not pious, but <laughs> the ones that are pious, that's what they're seeking, usually. And then uh, also, Ananya Chaita Satatam Yomam Sparati Nitya Saha Tasyaham Sulapa Parata Nitya Yukta Siroginā. Eighth chapter, 14th verse says, For one who always remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain, O son of Prita, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. So here we have 814. We have 828, and uh, there are other verses also that emphasize, and uh, 714, that completely surrendering to the Lord and purging one's mind of all material desires and replacing them with desires only to please the Lord, that means that one is headed back to Godhead or back to Vaikuntha or, or Goloka. But if one is pious with a, a residual attachment for enjoying heavenly pleasures, then they don't go back to Godhead. And it's because they're confused about what the goal actually is. So uh, this, this is an important point being made here. Uh, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, or fruit of activities, philosophical speculation, salvation as conceived by several persons are not the ultimate goal of life. What Krishna confirms is also in the second chapter. Trigunya, Vishaya, Veda, Nis Trigunya, Bhavarjana, Nirdwanda, Nirdwanda, let's see, what does it say? Yeah, so the Vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of material nature or Arjuna, become transcendental to these three modes, be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the self. So gain and safety is the thing that most people are seeking by being pious. Whereas a devotee is not interested in gain and safety. And people are illusioned by the flowery words of the Vedas. Yam imam pushpitam vachon pavadanti avipaschitaha. Vedavata Rata Parata Nanyat Astitivadina Karmat Manam Swargapura Janma Karma Falapadam Kriya Visesa Bahulam Bogai Swayagatim Prapti. That means men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which can recommend various fruit of activities for elevation to heavenly planets, result in good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification, opulent life, they say that there's nothing more than this. So this is it. This is the point. So you see, so many verses are pointing to pure devotion, and so many verses explain why people are bewildered in what is the actual goal of life. And it's all explained in Bhagavad Gita, and summarized by Swami or Sri Dara Swami. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, or fruit of activities, philosophical speculations, and salvation as conceived by several persons are not the ultimate goal of life. They are more or less practiced by persons who have no information of the ultimate goal of life. Yeah, when they hear about, you know, heavenly damsels and, and Soma Rasa, or Soma, uh, what do you call it? 
soma juice or soma liquor and uh, uh, transcendental gardens with rivers of wine, all that stuff. They get confused and they say, that's the real goal of life. That's what I want. But that's just glorified sense gratification and prolonged sense gratification. It's not really the goal of life. Therefore, uh, what's recommended is a life of tapasya, just like Brahma, he hears tapa. Then he understands, okay, if I want to understand anything about God, I have to be engaged in austere life, uh, denying uh, the, uh, the desires for sense gratification, but accepting the desires to please Krishna's senses. Whereas the Mayavadis, they only have half the truth, or half the chicken, and that is uh, just denying all material desires. So you can't live by denying all material desires. That's also explained in the Bhagavad Gita, that no one can stop doing anything even for a moment. There's, there's so many desires entering into the mind. And that's also explained. It says, Apuryamanam Achalam, in the second chapter again. Samudram apak pravisanti sarve yadvat tatvat kama yam pravisanti sarve sasantim apnuti nakama kami. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace, and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. So we can see that at every moment, so many desires are entering into the mind, and we're being distracted from what is the actual goal of life. Yeah, there was once a man who approached a guru, and he said, Maharaj, I love you very much. He said, oh, thank you. And he said, I hate my wife and my kids and my family involvement. He said, really? Yes, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. Now I want to surrender unto your feet, Maharaj. Please don't send me away. I love you, I love you, I love you. Wow, that was pretty strong words, right? So Maharaj said, okay, well, let, let me just ask you one thing, though. He said, uh, you go home and stay there for one week and wait till I call you. He said, Maharaj. I love you. I hate my wife. I hate my kids. I hate material life. I hate working. I hate the, everything about material life. I love you. I can't live without you even for one second. He said, I know, but if you love me so much, I just gave you an instruction and you're refusing to do it. <laughs> so please go home and stay one week with your family and I'll call you. He said, okay, Maharaj, but I'm doing it under protest. I said, I understand. I said, please listen to me. I said, okay. So he goes home. So then the Maharaj calls of, uh, one of his disciples, a very wealthy industrialist. He said, my dear devotee, he said, uh, there's one man, this is his name, this is his uh, phone number. I want you to call him up tomorrow and offer him a big position in your factory. He said, okay, Maharaj, can I ask you why? He said, don't ask, just do it. He said, okay, I'll do it. So the the industrialist called up this man and offered him a big position. And the man said, really? How did you hear about me? He said, no, you're, 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 we looked on your Lincoln uh, uh, Facebook uh, or uh, Lincoln page, and we could see that you have a very, very exceptional quality. He said, oh, really? Well, okay, when do you want to see me? Well, as soon as possible. Okay, I can be there tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. He said, fine. So he goes there the next morning. And he offers him a big job, you know, and get th three lakhs a month. Of course, that's nothing nowadays, but uh, it was good for him. And he immediately accepted the job. So he goes home. He said, Maharaj. He calls up Maharaj. Maharaj, I love you. I love you. Your lotus feet smell like roses to me. He said, oh, okay. Uh, what is it? He said, Maharaj, something has come up, and I don't think I can make it next week. But don't worry. Uh, don't call me. I'll call you. Thank you very much. And he hung up. 
So, this is the problem. Uh, this false renunciation and the false bravado, as they say in English, of uh, making all these claims, that <laughs> they're empty claims, and uh, as long as those residual desires for sense gratification are remaining, one cannot really surrender. And as long as there's still hope for finding some place and some time in the material world where one can have sustained sense gratification, going back to God, it is not a possibility. So we see that although uh, so many material desires are entering into mind every moment, one has to learn to, try to tolerate them and not strive to satisfy those desires. And Prabhupada writes, although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with much more water, but the ocean remains the same, steady. It is not agitated, nor does it cross beyond the limit of its brink. That is also true of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as one has the material body, the demands of the body for sense gratification will continue. The devotee, however, is not disturbed by such desires because of his fullness. A Krishna conscious man is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the ocean, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like the waters of the river that flow into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities, and he's not even slightly disturbed by desires for sense gratification. That is the proof of a Krishna conscious man, one who has lost all inclinations for material sense gratification, although the desires are present. Because he remains satisfied in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, he can remain steady, like the ocean, and therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, who want to fulfill desires, even up to the limit of liberation, what to speak of material desires, even uh, uh, what to speak of material success, never attain peace. The fruit of workers, the salvationists, and also the yogis who are after mystic powers, are all unhappy because of unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the service of the Lord, and he has no desires to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The devotees of Krishna have no material desires, and therefore they are in perfect peace. Well, that's uh, a wonderful platform to reach, and we can do it if we regularly hear this and meditate on it, and, and try and understand what Krishna is saying. You see, we just went through the Bhagavad Gita real quickly, and you see, he is saying that people, even good people who are following the Varnashram system, are bewildered in what the goal of it is. And they easily become attracted by the flowery language of the Vedas that promise heavenly pleasures on the Devalokas. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Are there any questions? Uh, you know, uh, how can we really a conditioned soul um, understand this process of surrender? In, in other words, I can't really condition so surrender. Yeah, that's horrible. For them, that's like ultimate defeat, the surrendering. Why? Because everybody wants to be independent, right? They have their own bank account, they have their own house, their car, their gun. All these things are signs of trying to be independent. But real independence is achieved by surrendering to Krishna and being free of gain and safety. This gain and safety is big business, right? How to win friends and influence people. You know, everybody reads that book. How to make money on the stock market. Everyone reads those things. How to uh, flip houses and become a millionaire 
with other people's money. I mean, all these, all these books are written so that people can be independent and powerful and enjoy sense gratification. How do they convince people to uh, buy this book or take this seminar? They, they point to some guy and say, you just see him, you know, he's got that cigar in his mouth and he's got a Cadillac and look at that beautiful blonde lady that's uh, his wife, you know, and, and the guy's over there, yes, sir, uh, I, I took the course and look what happened, you know, in three weeks I became a millionaire, you know, and, I'm, and it's a picture of him in Bahamas, you know, with the ladies walking around with the uh, bikinis and, uh, you know, he's got a gold necklace on, I think. See? <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is illusion. It's all illusion, you know, and and uh, people are falling for it all the time. So you can't cheat an honest person. You can only cheat a dishonest person. Honest person said, look, I'm satisfied. Uh, I have some prashad and uh, I have service. And, uh, I don't want to be a rich guy. I don't want to be a powerful person. I don't want to have any victims for my sense gratification. I'm satisfied with Krishna consciousness and doing service. So that type of person you can't really cheat. But a person who says, yeah, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, but I would like to have a nice, beautiful wife. Right? So those are the type of people that get cheated. You know, because as long as I want something. See, the, the, the con artists are very, very uh, expert. They can always tell if someone wants something and then they offer everything to them you know like the politicians they say if you vote for me then you'll get this and you'll get that and i'll give you this and i'll give you that and they're just offering things you know or, or if you ever hear trump speak and said well i'm gonna do this you know i'm gonna close that border and everyone goes yay and I'm going to, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, if you, if you lose your job, uh, we'll, we'll kick out all these uh, H-1B guys and give those jobs to you. And they're like, yay, you know. <laughs> and they're, they're happy, you know, hearing all those promises. But they're just promises, see. And most of those promises are not kept, you know, and then some other guy comes and he promises other things, and people say, "Well, this guy's no good." You know, he promised didn't keep it. This guy's promising. I have faith that he'll keep his promises. And then the next one doesn't keep his promises. Then some new guy comes and promises something else. So it's called hope against hope. You you hope that this one was going to keep his promises, he didn't. Then the next one comes, you say, "Okay, I hope he'll keep the promises," and he doesn't. So it's hope against hope. So people are bewildered. And, and at the same time, like the, uh, some people, they want to practice surrender process, but they, they surrender either partially, conditionally, or artificially. Either, what was the first one? Condition partially, partially. Partially, conditional, or artificial surrender. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like the way Bhattin Thakur explains it in the Shronagati, in a very first song, introductory song, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, you can never, if you, if, without love of God, no, if somebody trying to surrender without love, then you're going to fall in those three categories, either partial, artificial, or conditional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he friend, he said, in order to make everybody uh, surrender completely to Krishna, is with Prim. Yes, Prima Pumata Mahan. Supreme goal of life, pure love of Krishna. Achanta Dulava Pai, this is the book. Achanta Dulava Prima, Koribari Dhana, Sikayesh Ranagati, Pagatira Prama. You learn from the Saranagati. The Saranagati, the first one. Yeah. And that's a beautiful song. That describes the whole thing. You can just speak on that in every day. That song is amazing. 
So, uh, so Prabhupada, Prabhupada says, materialistic persons remain asleep in such a night due to their ignorance of self-realization. The introspective sage remains alert in the night of the materialistic men. The sage feels transcendental pleasure in the gradual advancement of spiritual culture, whereas a man in materialistic activities being asleep to self-realization dreams of varieties of sense pleasure. Dreams of varieties of sense. They don't even engage in varieties of sense pleasure. They just dream about it. Feeling sometimes happy and sometimes distressed in his sleeping condition. The introspective man is always indifferent to materialistic happiness and distress. He goes on with his self-realization activities undisturbed by material reactions. So that should be our position. Undisturbed by material reactions. The steady in our service. The only thing is just to kind of... <laughs> Yeah, but that's only where we can work around and surrender. Yeah. Just chant and be happy. Some people say, I'm chanting like 50 years, I'm still not happy. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. They're, they're committing some offense. Haribo. All glories to Prabhupada Kiche.